Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Watson Run Church this morning. Uh, we're so glad to have you here with us. We're so glad to just have this time to, to worship our Heavenly Father, just to be thinking of Him and focus on Him and, and, uh, and what He means to us. And uh, excited to just, you know, let Him be our, our focus and our priority this morning. And we're, and we're glad uh, that you're here, that you're a part of our time together. And, uh, and just looking forward to, you know, giving God glory, digging into His Word, His, His truth, His promises today, and, uh, <clears throat> and just worshiping Him. So, so thanks again for being here. Uh, just a couple quick things that I want to share with you, the things that are going on in the church. One, remember growing together, our new building um, out on 322. Um, you know, there, there's lots of ways that we're asking you to, to help and to be a part of that. One of them is the, the work days that we're doing out there on Saturday mornings and, and in the evenings uh, throughout the week. You know, we're, we're doing the, most of the renovations ourselves. And, uh, and so, you know, we're saving a lot of money, uh, but it's, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of work for, for people in the church. So we're asking you if you're, if you're able to and you can to, to, to pitch in and, and help. Uh, Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock, we're getting, getting together out there and, uh, and working on the building. And uh, I was out there yesterday and I commented to somebody like, you know, just seeing it all kind of come together and, and what a blessing it's, gonna, it's going to be. You know, we'll be able to have, I said, we'll be able to have like two things going on at the same time in the building and not, you know, be on top of each other. So it's, it's, it's very exciting and, and seeing it come together is exciting. So we just want you to, uh, to help out if you're able to be praying for that, be praying for the people that are, you know, spending all their, their time out there and doing the work. Uh, you know, pray f financially, you know, how you can give and, and contribute to our Growing Together fundraiser and, uh, and just pray for, you know, just in general, the logistics and the, and the transition uh, over the next coming months as, as we move to that facility. So uh, also remember for the offering this morning, it's not going to go around uh, in the room. If you, if you have a, a, your gift with you, you can put it in the box by the, uh, by the door on your way out. There's other ways that you can give. Uh, you can mail it to the church address that you see on the screen. You can set up uh, online giving through the, through the website, watsonrunchurch.org. Uh, and you can also set up a text to give option if you email or text uh, WRC and a, and a dollar amount to that phone number on the screen. The, it, you can one time set up an account and then you can, you can use that text to give option. So uh, whichever option works best and is, is most convenient uh, to you. Uh, those are those are available to you. Also, remember that we're going to have a kids' night October twenty third. Um, it's a Friday night from six to nine p.m. here at the church. You can bring your children here to the church, and uh, we'll take care of them for the for those three hours. We'll feed them dinner and uh, and and do games and activities and things with them. You can go out and uh, and have a nice you know date night with your with your significant other. Uh, so we want you to have that on your calendar and, and plan on taking advantage of that. And then uh, last thing this morning, just, you know, any time in your life that, that you've got something going on or you hear of something happening and you just, you feel like praying and you, and uh, you, you can share that prayer request so that other people can pray along with you. You can email it to prayer at watsonrunchurch.org. Uh, we have people that will faithfully pray for those things. So just keep that in your mind uh, to just share those, those prayer requests and, and share answered prayers. Uh, you can also write them on the communication cards that are in the chair in front of you and, and put those in the box by the door on your way out. And uh, if you're new to the church or visiting with us this morning, those communication cards are a great way uh, for us to connect with you, to tell you more about our church. So we, we'd love to have you fill one of those out and, uh, and put it in the box by the, by the, by the door on your way out. So... Uh, but again, we, we want to be here this morning and, and really be intentional about giving God, you know, our, our attention, uh, giving him glory, giving him honor, giving him gratitude from our hearts, just, you know, reflecting on, on who he is and what he's done for us on the, on the life that, that, we, that we live as followers of Jesus. And so, uh, you know, that's what we're here for this morning and we want to spend time in worship. And so I'm going to ask you if you would, just let's just pray together, church. God, we thank you so much for this day. And God, we thank you for, for life and, and God, for bringing us here in this room this morning together. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you help us to, to just sort of step back and, 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 and look at the, the big picture, God. Look at, look at this life from the standpoint of, of our sin and, and the punishment for sin. And uh, God, just what we were owed, what we have coming to us, if it wasn't for you, you and your love and for your son, Jesus, for his forgiveness of our sins. Uh, God, we're just grateful this morning to, to, to be able to, to celebrate. And God, we want to use this time just to, to sing and, and lift our voices. And God, just make it about you. Make it about saying thank you. 
Uh, God, make it about telling you that we love you. We want more of you in our lives. God, we just want to uh, we, we want to just celebrate and, and give you honor in this place this morning, Lord. Uh, you, are, you are a good, gracious, loving, heavenly Father. And we just want to be thankful and, and, and come before you and, and tell you that from our hearts, Lord. So we just pray uh, that, that our, our worship this morning, God, that it comes from, from us, it comes from within. Uh, God, that it's not just us going through the motions, but it's us just excited and, and blessed to, to honor you, Lord. And we just pray uh, that it's pleasing to you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
I search the world But it couldn't fill me And man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough And you came along And put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied Here in your love Sing it out church
Ah, church, listen to, listen to this verse, Romans 5.1. Romans 5.1 says that, that we are made right by our faith. We're made right with God by our faith in Jesus. And it says this, that we have peace with God because we're made right with him because of what Jesus has done for us. And if, and if you think about that, you know, apart from Jesus, you and I are, are sinful, selfish people that have turned from God, that, that think we're our own gods, that think we don't need God. And so there's no way to be at peace with him if that's what we are. But Romans 5.1 is saying, you know, when, when, when we ask Jesus to save us, when he forgives us of our sins, now we're not a sinner that, that's, that needs to be punished. We're, we're someone who's been set free, whose debts have been paid, that's been washed clean. The Bible says our, our sins have been removed from us. And so now we can be at peace with God, at peace with our, with our creator, with our heavenly father. John 14, 27, Jesus said that he is leaving us a gift. He's leaving us a gift of peace of mind. And then he says this, it's a gift that the world can't give. It's a gift that only he can give. The world cannot give you and I peace of mind. It only comes from knowing, you know, that, that your eternity is, is secure. You know, without that, you might have good times and, and bad times in life, ups and downs, but you don't have that, that peace of mind that says, listen, circumstances be what they may, Things come, things go. The mountain or the valley, I serve the same God. I am here because of the same God's love for me. And, and, and all of a sudden you have this peace. You have this peace in your, in your heart, in your, in your soul, in your mind that it doesn't matter. Many of the things that the world struggles with and gets wound up about and upset about they don't have to cause us that same anxiety, that same burden, that same trouble. Jesus says, I've, I've left you with peace of mind that you have been made right with God. And so I just want you to think this morning with me that you know most of us, we think that life is pretty good in general and everybody around us kind of acts like life is good, but I feel like just below the surface, you know, there's, there's, there's bubbling just issues and, and, and troubles and those anxieties and, and worries and fears, struggles, wondering how things are gonna work, wondering where the answers will come from. And we try to kind of hide it and keep it below the surface, but, but it's there. And it's there for the, the world outside of the church. It's there for the world that doesn't know Jesus is their savior. And they've got all that, just that, that struggle, that, that fear, that burden. They don't feel peace about life. John 14, 27, the last part of that verse, Jesus says, don't, do not fear, do not be afraid, right? He's, he's, he's given us a gift that the world can't give and, and peace of mind and, and forgiveness of sins through his blood. And so we just wanna to continue to, to worship this morning, worship a God who, who loves us, who saves us, who removes our sins from us, who, who cleanses us and gives us that peace, church. I want you just to find that peace this morning. Don't be consumed by, by the troubles, by the waves just under the surface of your life. They can come and go, they can crash as they may. We have peace in God this morning. Let's worship him together.
shaking instead can be calmed and broken for my regard through it all through it all my eyes are on you through it all through it all it is well through Far be it from me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea Through it all
Give the Lord some praise this morning. Come on. Thank Him for the peace. Thank Him for the peace of mind. The gift from Jesus. You may be seated as we dismiss the kids to go downstairs. thank the Lord for the worship team this morning. <clears throat> All right, well, it's good to be back. I've been uh, away for three weeks. <laughs> uh, and then I, I was pretty excited about coming back. And then yesterday I started coming down with, I don't know, allergies or what. My head's boo. Uh, but it's good. Lucky for you, we had a child dedication in the first service, so... And normally, you know, when I do that, I'll lengthen the message for the second service, you know, to make up for that time. I didn't feel good enough to do that. So, uh, so you're going to get off a little easy this morning. But anyhow, uh, you know, I want to thank <coughs> Pastor Bill Rogers and, and uh, you know, for filling in for me for Brandon. I kind of threw that at Brandon last minute. And I said, oh, by the way, we're not going to be here this weekend. You're, you're up. Uh, Brad Clinton, you know, we'd, uh, how many were here for Brad? Yeah, good guy. That was just kind of a weird thing. My dad bought a motor home from him and, you know, through the passing of my mother, you know, um, you know, we were having the outside service up there and we had been talking to him about potentially speaking. So that just worked out fantastic. So uh, excited about that and again you know to be able to call on Brandon to take the pulpit in you know in my absence so it was good uh, Bonnie and I went away for <clears throat> a few days to the campground and she froze I loved every minute of it I mean I just I, I love the colder weather like that it's just nice and and uh, you know spent a lot of time in, in the scriptures which was wonderful I got a, a, a couple I've been working on a couple messages and and I'm excited about it. One I'm going to hit you with next week. It's it's for Pastor Jim. I'm going to go all Hebrew on you next week. <laughs> you know, um, but it's good. And and it was it was good to get away. But it's good to be back. I, I do want to encourage you. You know, as Brandon talked about, you, you know, the building out on 322. You know, I said before. You know, we've seen God just affirming that move in so many different ways. At some point, when it's appropriate. You know, we're going to lay that all out, you know, for everybody to see. But but I, I have been trying to encourage people, you know, if you want to stop out to the building, we're out there every evening, Monday through Thursday, and then Saturday all day. If you want to just stop out and walk through and, and take a look, uh, we'd love to have you do that. You know, in the in the big part of the building, all the framing's done. We're getting pretty close to drywall. There's some framing uh, to do out back. Most of the plumbing's done, electric. Uh, it's coming along nice. Some new doorways have been, you know, installed in the block walls, you know, so it's, it's really changing, uh, you know, so I would just encourage you, if you would like to stop out in an evening or something, take a look, please do that. Uh, uh, we're looking forward, and you're, you're, it's going to look like a bomb went off outside. We're moving a lot of dirt in, you know, for the new parking lots, which are well underway, so <clears throat> uh, come, take a look, you know, it's your building, so... Uh, Today I want to talk to you a little bit, you know, I, I, so we did a child dedication in the first service and, and I talked a little bit about faith. I want to talk to you this morning. Title is simply Understanding Faith. You know, over the years as a pastor, some 18, 19 years, you know, I, I, I get what I call strange questions a lot. And, you know, some people, people will randomly say, you know, how come you're always, you know, talking about this relationship with Jesus Christ? And I said, well, that's what the church is all about, you know. And, uh, you know, why you always t preach on faith, you know? 
And it's kind of like, you know, when we get those two things figured out and, and we're mastering them every day, then I'll, I'll stop preaching that. But until then, you know, I'm, I'm going to preach faith because, you know, faith is, you, you and I can't understand salvation short of faith. Uh, so just another little twist on faith that I want to look at a, a portion of scripture with you uh, that's pretty familiar this morning. Um, you know, and, I, and, I, and hopefully... You know, and I'll share with you a little bit before I get started. You know, two weeks ago, you know, during it would have been our outside service up here. We had a lot of family at home and and friends around, and I, I got to share with one individual a little bit about faith. And this person possesses, you know, makes no claim um, to any kind of a religion or relationship or anything like that. And you know, so I, you know, I got to you know talk to them about eternity and it was interesting they claimed to be an atheist but i don't know that, <clears throat> i don't know that a real atheist even exists but um but it was an interesting conversation but the conversation quickly went into you know this thing of faith and, and it was just interesting to hear you know somebody that's totally apart from the church don't want anything to do with the church don't want anything to do with you know god or at least they say you know it's interesting to hear that person talk about faith uh, so that's probably more the motivation for this message today. Uh, so, but anyhow, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started. God, we thank you. Uh, God, again, for this day, God, for this opportunity to be here this morning and just enjoy a, a time of fellowship. We've got a wonderful time of praise and worship. And, and God, again, a time to, to allow you to speak to us through the scriptures. And God, we just... You know, pray that this morning, you know, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we could prepare our hearts and and we could just sort of quiet our minds, you know, for a moment and, uh, and allow you to do that. God, speak to us in a way that you only you can. And God, I pray that we would be encouraged, you know, with the, the scriptures this morning. God, I pray that you would speak through me, that I would simply be a vessel that you use to get your message to the people. God, I thank you as, I, as I've studied and and as I've again focused in on this topic of faith that uh, God each time it's just it's one of those topics that never gets old each time God I learn each time I grow uh, and God I thank you for that so so God may we just today uh, be encouraged by our surroundings our brothers and sisters in Christ you know by the by the fellowship by the music God most of all may we be encouraged to go deeper in our relationship with you God, and as a result of that, then go into the world uh, and just love and serve those around us. God, looking for opportunities to share about Jesus Christ. God, we thank you again for this day, and we pray it all this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I want to apologize in advance. I'm normally not this quiet, but I know if I raise my voice, I'm going to start coughing. So, uh, But anyhow... I, I, you know, we're going to look at Hebrews 11.4 in, in a few minutes, and we're actually going to look at it a lot uh, this morning. Uh, but I want to talk just for a little bit about faith, uh, because everybody has some type of faith. Uh, you know, people have faith in many different things. You know, think about it this morning. If you drove here this morning, you went out, you got in your car, you had some level of faith that if you... Uh, stuck the key in and turned it that she was going to start and, and, and get you here this morning. Uh, you know, we have faith in, in doctors that, you know, he or she, he or she uh, you know, knows what they're doing and, and, and can tend to our health care issues. You know, everybody has a mindset of faith of some kind or another. Uh, I don't, I, I believe nobody can l live a single day without exercising some level of faith in their lives. Uh, faith is also expressed, you know, in a spiritual realm. Uh, each of us, regardless of our backgrounds, you know, we express faith in, in some way. The difference between the faith or the faiths that we exercise in our daily routines uh, and, and our religious faith, faith is ultimately in the, in the object of that faith. In other words, what is it that we have faith in? Everyone places his or her faith in something or someone. Uh, 
think about the Muslim, you know, the, the, the Muslim person puts his faith in the Quran and, and in Muhammad, you know, in our world. And, and there's a lot of religions we could talk about, but, you know, think about the humanness. You know, they, they put their faith in themselves. The religious person, you know, puts their faith in their own good works. Uh, that's why we say there's a difference. You know, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. Uh, the problem is none of these, however, can save us. You, you know, none of these can save us because in each of these cases, the object of our faith or of faith is wrong. Uh, our, our faith then, we would say, is only as good as the object in which we place our faith in. Uh, we're told in the Bible that we are to personally, and, and I love how, you know, Scripture, you know, uh, says that uh, we're, we're to personally put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. In other words, me for me, you for you. I, I can't, you know, I can't help you with faith in Christ. You can't help me with faith in Christ. That's something I need to do on my own. Acts 4.12 says, neither is there uh, salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, I want to turn to a portion of scripture that's probably familiar to most of us this morning Hebrews 11 uh, verses 1 through 4 and then we're going to we're going to read it and then we're going to break it down a little bit we're going to look at it pretty hard this morning. It says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen but or for by it the elders obtained a good testimony <clears throat> by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible it gets a little confusing doesn't it we're going to break that down here in a little bit verse four by faith abel offered to god a more excellent sacrifice than cain through which he obtained witness uh, that he was righteous and God testifying of his gifts and through it, uh, he being dead still speaks. Uh, so, you know, we would always start with the, the same question, what is faith? You know, what is faith? And I think for you and I to really understand faith and to look at it again, we, we need to first get past what I believe are a few misconceptions, uh, you, you know, in our world when it comes to faith. There are people that think, in our world, sadly to say, even in some churches, that, that as long as they are sincere about whatever it is they believe, then that faith will be good enough for them. But Paul says in 2 Timothy 1.12, he said, listen to this, that is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this, uh, this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. So, you know, we would say that saving faith is not in an object or in some self-concocted uh, idea. Saving faith then ultimately is in Jesus Christ, right? Saving faith is ultimately in Jesus Christ. In other words, if, if your beliefs are not founded on the right person, then it really doesn't matter what else you believe. Hebrews chapter 11, our scripture this morning, you know, tells us what real faith is. Listen again as, as I read some more, uh, you know, verse one again says, now faith is the substance, and we could break that word down, substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Uh, and we notice that word substance or substance and, and, and a good way to understand uh, the meaning of substance or, or that word is to think of a subfloor. You know, in most homes, most conventionally built homes, you know, the floor that we are actually walking on isn't really what's holding you up. There is a subfloor underneath it. Uh, it, and that subfloor is the thing that is unseen, right? You don't see it, but it's actually holding you up. If we would take it away, you'd probably go into the basement. Uh, so it's, it's unseen support. Faith, is the, faith then is the affirmative response to God's will and to his word. Uh, man possesses faith uh, when he takes God at his word. 
In, in other words, we take God as his, at his word. We don't need to see it. We don't need to feel it. We don't need to touch it. In other words, we don't need to see something to believe it. Uh, you know, faith is the acceptance of something uh, simply because God has said it or because God says it is true. Jesus said in John 20, 29, he said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet they believe. Back to our scripture uh, in Hebrews 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The word hoped, hoped for. You know, we get two words. We're going to look at a little bit here. Hope is, is literally uh, faith relating to the future. Hope is faith relating to, to a day yet to come. Conviction is faith relating to the present. You know, the moment we are in. Verse 2, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Uh, Verse three, through faith we understand that the wor worlds were framed by the word of God that, so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Man, I don't know about you, but that, that can get a little complicated, right? It's like, you know, almost the head starts to spin there a little bit. But an example would be an idea like this. No man was present uh, or no man was present to witness creation, right? Because man man, humankind had not been made. Uh, we were not present to witness creation. That must be something that you and I accept by faith. You know, we need to believe God at his word and we need to accept it by faith. He created something out of nothing. And, and it's important with this scripture. He created something out of nothing so that things that are seen were not made of things which do not appear. I probably complicated that a little bit more for you. But anyhow, the book of Genesis, it really explains the events of this creation and that explanation must be accepted through faith. You and I cannot read Genesis about creation and we can accept it any other way but by faith. So we would say then true faith is is sort of a simple obedience to and believing in God's word. You know, true faith is, is a simple obedience to and believing in God's word. And, and if we could hashtag it or, not, or asterisk that a little bit, you know, in spite of our circumstances. You know, in other words, we're obedient to and we believe God's word in spite of our circumstances or maybe even in spite of our consequences. Faith is described in a twofold way. It is the substance of things hoped for, right, future, uh, and the evidence of things not seen. Again, the word substance means literally to stand under or to support. Faith then becomes the foundation that gives you and I, the believer, the confidence to stand as a believer in Jesus Christ in, in our fallen world. Faith is the confidence of things hoped for. You know, why do we do what we do as believers? You know, why do we stand up for what we believe is the word of God, the, the true word of God in a world that opposes it so much? Because we are hoping for something down the road, which would be an amazing life in eternal life with Christ Jesus, right? Uh, how many know God has two ways in which people can come to him for salvation? I'll probably get some feathers ruffled here a little bit. But I want that. There's, you know, there's two ways to come to God for salvation. You know, I got Kurtz. He, got, he did look. Stick with me here. And, 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 and I think this is true, but you got to understand. Let me get it. Let me get through it. The first is that you can come to him by works. <laughs> you know, I read, ooh, I'm really getting you there, huh? We can come to God by works. I believe this with all my heart, but here's the thing. That is, if you can present perfection in your works, right? In other words, if you and I can present perfection in our works, I believe God would, I believe God would accept us. But here's the thing. So far, you know, since creation, 
No one has been able to do that, right? Adam didn't do it, you know, and no one ever since Adam has been able to do that. Abraham couldn't do it. David didn't do it. Daniel didn't do it. And I don't think, you know, according to scriptures, anybody will ever do it. But it is a way. It's just really out of reach. It's not obtainable. Uh, and listen, none of those guys were perfect, couldn't be perfect, will never be perfect this side of eternity. So, but, but I tell you that for a reason. It's going to make sense when we start talking about Abel and Cain here in a minute. You know, therefore, it, you know, we would render that a, a, as not a satisfactory way to come to God then, right? You know, that's not one we probably want to set out and, and, and stake our eternity on. Uh, but the sad thing is many people are hobbling along that futile path in life trying to do it. Trying to do it. Trying to be good enough. Trying to be perfect enough. You know, they just, you know, faith. I want to tell you a story about a missionary named Hudson Taylor. I've, I've talked about this gentleman before, but he, he, kind of a neat guy. But uh, when Hudson Taylor first went to China, uh, he was a missionary. He, he was on a sailing vessel. We would call it a, you know, a, a sailboat, big ship. And their vessel had come very close to the shore of the Cannibal Islands because the ship was caught in a calm. In other words, it's a sailboat, but there was, have you ever been in, you know, when there's like zero wind, it's just calm and still and nothing's happened. You know, so they're now at the mercy of the water. They're sitting on the water, it's calm. You know, but there's still motion in our world, right? There is, they don't, you're not gonna sit still on water, they're moving. Well, they're, they're slowly drifting towards the shore of the savages of the Cannibal Island. And, and you gotta believe the savages are licking their lips because lunch is on its way, right? And, and the, the captain of the boat knows this. I mean, you know, they, they, they get it, you know. Uh, so the captain comes to Mr. Taylor and, and, and he sought him out because he, you know, he knew he, he was a missionary and, and he was a godly man. And he said, listen, uh, can you pray to God, you know, to help us in this situation? Because we either need to wind to blow or we're gonna be lunch here soon for these cannibal. Uh, and Mr. Taylor said, well, I will provide one thing that you go ahead and set the sails, right? And, and the captain says, yeah, that's not happening. You know, if, if I put the sail, think about Noah, you know, in, in, in building a ship when it hadn't rained in, in months and months and months, you know. Here's this captain, you know, he's a prideful man. He said, I'm, no, no way I'm gonna put the sails up. You know, it's perfectly calm. These people are gonna think I'm crazy if I put my sails up. So the captain declined because uh, he didn't want to make himself a laugh laughing stock. And, and, you know, Mr. Taylor said, well, that's the only way I'm going to pray. You know, there's a, how many know there's a scripture in uh, 2 Kings chapter 3, I think it's verse 16. It's Elijah and, and, and it's one of the, in, in, this, in some of the studies I do of translations, you, you know, it's one of the ones that I point out because you're newer translations. But it, anyhow, and it, you know, God's going to bring rain, to, you know, for the crops and for the animals and for the people to drink. You know, but God says, you go out into the valley and you dig ditches, right? You prepare for the rain, I'm going to bring you the rain. Some of the modern translations just say God's going to bring the rain. You know, it takes the part out, I'm going down a rabbit trail here, but it takes the part out that we need to do. We need to have the faith that God's going to send the rain. If God says he's going to send rain, dig a ditch, dig a ditch. You know, Mr. Taylor saying to the captain, I'll pray for rain, but, or I'll pray for wind, but set your sails and get ready for it. And, well, eventually the, the captain says, okay, uh, you know, I'll do it. So he set the sails out and they're in this calm. And while uh, Mr. Taylor was in prayer, you know, in his, in his room, uh, there, there, there came a knock at the door and Mr. Taylor said, who's there? And he said, it's the captain. And he said, are you still praying for wind? And Mr. Taylor said, yeah, I am. He said, well, you better stop. We got more wind than we can manage right now. Uh, you know, that's faith. You know, if you don't set sail, you don't have faith that God can bring the wind. You know, same thing in 2 Kings, you know, uh, chapter 3. You know, if we don't go out and do our part and dig the ditches to accept the rain that God's going to bring, you know, that shows a lack of faith on our part. You know, Hudson Taylor had faith, listen to this, in, in what was unseen and in what was yet to become. 
Another word describing what faith is, is evidence, and it means conviction. We talked about that a little earlier. Uh, verse one again, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, it's, it's sort of an inward conviction then, and this inward conviction really enables you and I as believers uh, you know, to believe things that we have not yet seen. Uh, you know, we believe that God will do what he promises he will do in our lives. We believe things that are yet unseen. You know, that's the conviction that only faith can bring in our lives. Listen, as I read verse four again, as it deals now with Abel's faith, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain through which he obtained witnesses uh, or witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts and through it, uh, he being dead still speaks. What's that mean? He being dead still speaks. It means this, simply this. You know, even though Abel is dead today and been dead for a long time, his faith is still speaking out as we read about it from the word of God, is it not? You know, that faith is still speaking to you and I today. Uh, notice, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Romans 10, 17 says uh, that faith comes by hearing of the word of God. God revealed to Adam that the only way back to him was by a blood sacrifice, all right? In other words, something must give its life. Something, an animal has to be killed. The blood has to be shed in order for man to come back to him. And that was God's way at that time. Now understand the new covenant in the New Testament and Jesus Christ changed all that. But back in that time in the scripture, that was the, the, the way it was. Jesus Christ would then get, you know, give his life in the future, but we're back in God's time. You know, in the future, he would shed his blood. In the future, he would become the Lamb of God, but not back in God's time. This lamb sacrifice was made known to Abel and Cain, right? Uh, and that God would receive no other offering, and it had to be God's way. You know, so Cain and Abel, Abel and Cain were, were, were told how it had to be, and, and God's not going to change his mind. How many know God still didn't change in his mind on that one, right? He's not, God hasn't changed his mind on how we're going to get to God. It's still through a blood sacrifice. It's, it's still through something paying the price for our sin. John the Baptist said in John 1 29, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, behold, the Lamb of God... There it is, who takes away the sin of the world. John 3, 16 and 17, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, uh, but that the world through him might be saved. You see, faith caused Abel to worship God. Verse four again, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. You know, I believe Adam without a doubt had, had, had told both of his sons, Abel and Cain, uh, that the word of God was the way back to God. You know, the way it was laid out in the scripture is the way back to God. It's the way to eternal life. You know, and then in the scripture, we see that Adam chose the choicest lamb as an offering and he brought it to the place of sacrifice and i believe the lesson which is taught us you know by this first example of faith is simply this abel believed that which he had heard from god right and, and on, on this all-important subject of of coming back to god or, or you know whereas we would understand it at, unto salvation and, and so Abel believed, but Cain did not believe. But notice Cain was not godless as many people think. In fact, I believe Cain's offering may have in some sense cost him more than Abel's. But the way back to God that Cain chose, and this is where it's important for you and I, the way back to God that Cain chose was his own way. 
right? He didn't choose God's way. He knew God's way. It had been told to him God's way, but he chose his own way. While the way which Abel took was the way that had been made known and had been revealed and laid down as God's way, Cain had heard the report. He understood what all that was as well as Abel, but Cain did not believe God. So what did he do? He did what a lot of people are doing in our world today. He invented uh, what, what he must have supposed to be a better way, a more excellent way. He could come, he come up with his own way, you know. Uh, you know, Cain brought, the scriptures say Cain brought, if you go back into Genesis 4, I believe it is, Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to Jehovah. I believe it's in Genesis 3. But you got to understand something about that grain. You know, Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. He was a farmer, right? He was farming the field. He, he brought of the, fruit of, the, uh, of the fruit of the ground. But that ground that he brought it from, the Lord God had just before put under the curse for man's sin. And he said to Adam in Genesis 3, 17, cursed is the ground. Listen to this. Cursed is the ground because of your sin. Cain brought as his offering to the Lord, you know, he, this is his way of getting right to, to heaven. He's he going to do it his way. So he brings as an offering to the Lord that which God has pronounced to be cursed. Abel brought the firstborn of his flock. And the Bible says, in the fat thereof. What was it that made Abel's more excellent, a more excellent sacrifice than Cain's? You know, we can only understand it when we remember, when we remember what the words by faith means. You know, they, they mean that God had spoken, right? That Cain and Abel had heard and that Abel obeyed and Cain did not. You know, it was a question, you know, and as we have seen, you know, a, a, it, it was a question of believing what had been spoken as to the way back to God. For you and I, it's believing in what had been spoken in a way to eternal life. You know, God's way back, which Abel took, was by sacrifice, by, by, by the death of a substitute, by the blood of atonement. You know, this was the law of redemption. This was ultimately what later down the road, you know, would, would be wrote into Israel's legislation, so to speak. You know, man's way back, which Cain invented, was without blood. And it was a way in which he had devised out of his own heart. It had nothing to do with the scriptures. But in Hebrews 9.22, we read that, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Cain's way was sort of this new theology. You know, it, it, was, it was the new thing of his day. You know, here, I, I got this plan. I think it's going to work. And it simply consisted of not believing in what God had spoken and, and sort of inventing this new way of his own. How many know that Cain's way is man's way? Cain's way is man's way. L listen, Cain's way, I believe, is actually where all the man-made religions of the world sprouted up from. I, I believe that's where they all started. The extent of these two ways is simply this. One way, or, or one is God's way, the other is man's way. One is by faith, the other is by imagination, or, or whatever you want to call it. One is of grace... The other is of merit. It, it's a battle that's been going on in our world, even within the church. You know, one is of faith, the other is of works. One is Christianity, the other is religion. That's why we say Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. The one rests on what God has said, the other rests on what man thinks. Remember I talked about the conversation I had with the person? You know, they were doing it Cain's way. They just pretty were, they were pretty determined they could, they could get to heaven Cain's way. One rests on what Christ has done. 
The other rests on what man can do. These two words sum up, and I believe embody the two ways, done and do, right? Done and do. As to what man is to do, there is no end. And, and there is no end to the variety of what man can try to do to, to earn a, a way to eternal life. But the reality is what needs to be done has already been done. God put down the principle once and for all. And the principle is this, that mankind must approach him, him being God, uh, on only one basis, and that is the basis of faith. You and I can only approach God on the basis of faith with, with the intention of inheriting eternal life. Salvation will be by faith in Christ and no other way, according to the scriptures that I read. Not only did Abraham uh, seek Christ's day and rejoice, but Abel did also. And there at the very beginning, God made clear the way to himself, Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. You know, we come to God on one basis, that we are sinners, and, and that the penalty for our sin must be paid. You know, that is the reason a, a lamb had to be slain. Same back in the Old Testament when we're talking about this morning. You know, the lamb couldn't take away the sin, but it foreshadowed the coming of Jesus Christ, who is ultimately the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, right? And it was offered in faith. Abel's offering pointed to Christ and he came by faith. That is the way of salvation. God made the way very clear at the very beginning of time. God has made it very clear to us. You know, if you know anything about the scriptures, if you've said any in any churches where they're sharing the message of Jesus Christ, it's probably been made very clear to us. Christ is the way to himself. God gave him to die for our sins. Abel illustrates that to us, you know, through faith. You know, we would simply say it's the blood sprinkled way. It's the blood sprinkled way. It's the way that is Christ. You know, if you're here this morning and, and, and you've never made that decision, uh, you know, to, to, to place your faith in what the scripture said, which is ultimately to place your faith in, in Jesus Christ, knowing that through faith in Christ is the only way we will be able to spend eternity in heaven. You know, if you're here this morning and you've never actually done that, you know, I encourage you to do that. Uh, you know, just two weeks ago, I was talking to somebody uh, about their salvation experience and it was like so all over the board. And they couldn't just even nail down a, a time where they thought maybe something transformed in them. And, and, and I just shared with them, you know, here's the thing. You know, I think, we, I think we have two birthdays, you know, once when we were, you know, born from the womb. And the second birthday is, is when we invite Jesus Christ into our heart and life. And, and I don't know about you, but, but I don't forget either day. I, I can remember, well, I can't remember when I was born out of the womb, but but I can remember the day I was saved. It was March 1995, um, 11.30 at night, you know, March 18th, 11.30 at night, 1995. You know, when God spoke to me and I crawled out of bed and I said, okay, enough of me, I, I need God in my life. You, you know, if you don't have that kind of experience or at least can't narrow it down, I tell everybody, you know, if you can narrow it down to a season in your life, I'll go with that, but if you can't, narrow it down to a season maybe you just need to hit, to hit the foot of the cross again and say Jesus Christ I need you in my life I need you in my heart I want you to be my Lord and Savior I want to by faith trust you for eternal life man do that this morning if you have not done that let's pray God we thank you God, for this day, for this opportunity, for each person here this morning. And, and God, truly, you, only you know where we stand in our relationship with you. God, you truly know who's saved and who is, isn't. Who isn't. But, but God, the scriptures are very clear. It's by faith in Jesus Christ that we uh, enter into the, the, this right to spend eternity in heaven with you. Uh, so, God, I would pray this morning that each person in this place has made that decision, that each person in this place 
you know, isn't sitting here wondering, well, well, when was that time? You know, that time could simply be now. There, you know, we don't get merit points or, or a badge, you know, for how early we were saved. It's just all about being saved and being in a relationship with Jesus Christ. I mean, if you can't narrow it down, invite him into your heart today. You know, believe the scriptures. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him by faith and invites him into his heart to be his Lord and Savior will be saved, will spend eternity in heaven with him. It's that simple. God, we thank you for each life represented here today. God, we thank you that uh, you loved us enough to send your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. God, may we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is our savior and that we have eternal life and then beyond that God let us just go out into the world and love and serve and, and share that message with the people around us God we thank you again today for all that you do in our lives and we pray this morning in Jesus name amen
thank you again so much, church, for being here with us this morning. And uh, I just pray that, you know, as you leave here, uh, you just think of God's faithfulness to us, his promises to us, his truth, um, and, and just us being faithful to him and, and believing in him, accepting him as our savior. And I just pray that you leave here just, just filled with his, his spirit, his presence, his love this morning. And uh, have a great week, everybody. God bless you.